name. Tell my name. First, let's uh, give ourselves a round of applause for being out here, right? I was uh, with the family of one of the victims last night, and it's just tragic. Um, Kaysan Mormon, him losing his life at 15 years old. And this morning, I left the church on Badger Avenue for Regiment Terry. He was killed downtown Newark after coming home from college. So it doesn't matter where you live, what ward you in, whether you have a high school education or a college degree, whether you're taking out garbage or whether you're going to the store for your mother, you are still liable to be a victim in this city that has gone out of control with violence and murder. Newark, however, is like most inner cities in America. In Chicago, they're witnessing 500 to 600 murders a year. So there's something going on in America, not just Newark. There's something happening in America, something happening with poverty, with unemployment, with hopelessness, with destituteness, with guns on our streets, with young people feeling like they have to go to the streets rather than go to their families. Our families are being broken apart, and there's absolutely nothing we're doing about it. So this problem is just not a Newark problem, it's an, it's a, an American problem. Yes, sir. The problem with transforming these neighborhoods where we live is an American problem. Yes, there are women all over America right now today crying because they lost their son to senseless violence in the streets. Now it's not just sons, you also can lose your daughter out here. Yes. The code has gotten so twisted that women are also victimized by this craziness that's happening every single day in the streets. That there's nobody safe. I remember when I was young, they used to give you a pass for your mother being in the street if you're walking with your mother or your sister. But today they'll kill your mother in cold blood in front of you. This is the type of person that we are raising in this community. So no, we just don't need jobs. We do, we, and we just don't need a, 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 a fight against poverty. And we just don't need police. What we actually need is a transformation of the culture in this community. A culture that has embraced violence, that has embraced degradation, that has embraced pain instead of hope. When we had the march against cancer, breast cancer, you couldn't even get on Broad Street. I was down here, and many of you was down here too, and we should have been down here. But we should fill the streets the same way for this disease that's killing us faster than cancer. There is a disease that's wiping us out faster than cancer, faster than AIDS, faster than any disease. The leading cause of death for African American men in America is homicide. Not cancer, not sickle cells, not HIV, not lead poisoning, but murder. Murder is the number one cause of death for African American boys growing up in America. Which means that we have to fill the streets for the same disease. Yes. We have to treat this like a disease. And when we become fed up enough to stop pointing fingers, right. fed up enough to stop blaming individuals, right. fed up enough to come together as a community and say enough is enough, that this will stop. That we have to make this stop the same way we made segregation stop. Right. That we have to make this stop the same way we made slavery stop. Right. We have to make this stop the same way we fought for the right to vote. We have to make this stop the same way we fought for the eight-hour day. That's right. We have to come together. And I know there's people saying that protest doesn't get anything. These people are wrong. All over the world, there are people in the streets, in Egypt, in Greece, in Europe, in, in, in the Middle East. There are young people in the streets fighting for democracy against violence and for hope. We have to do the same thing. Don't let people take your weapon away. It is important if you had 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 people out here, believe me, the state and the country would listen to what's going on in North New Jersey. That's right. When we get these young people, not just the adults, when young people take to the streets. So I just want to talk to all these young people that are out here today. The young people that I saw at the funeral today, you couldn't even get in because young people are all in the pews. From University High, from Central High from the college of New Jersey that he went to. All of the young people that are out here today that are witnessing their friends murdered at 14 and 15 years old because of a disease that we can't get under control. All of you young people in this community that are sitting here afraid 
I'm going to tell you this. Martin Luther King was a young man when he began to organize. When they began to desegregate lunch counters, they were 17 and 18 years old. That anything worth changing in America has been done by young people. Stop waiting for me. Stop waiting for these adults. Stop waiting for a legislators and elected officials. Stop waiting for us. You young people have to take to the streets. You young people have to change the climate. You young people have to transform this community. You have to walk the streets. You have to make the other young people put down their guns. You have to make these drugstores stop selling Percocets to our young people. You have to go into these bodegas and tell them to stop selling these drugs to our children. Young people have to do it. You have to make the teachers educate the children. You have to make the principals do their job. You have to make the elected officials put money in your community. You have to make them build recreation centers. Young people have to do that. Not the people who come to council meetings. Not even the people who organize the rallies. None of these people can do it. You have to do it. 17, 18, 19, 20 years old. Get some fire in your damn belly and do something about the condition in this community. The future of this city is yours. It's not mine. I'm 44 years old. My life is halfway over. Yours has just begun. Get involved. The future of this city is yours. These buildings that they're building downtown is your property. The Port Authority is your property. The block is not just yours. The whole damn city is yours. You don't just own the block. Claim the entire city, the airport, the seaport. Every university belongs to you. City Hall and every building they're building. Every time they get out of tax abatement, the resources belong to you. The city is yours. Take control of it. Stop waiting for the next event to go to. Plan the event yourself. I never waited for nobody to organize me, to tell me what to do. Do it yourself. Grab this microphone and speak for yourself. I can't speak for you. I'm not 18 no more. I'm not 19 no more. You're not listening. I'm not listening to the music you listen to. I don't read the stuff you're reading. I don't have to deal with what you deal dealt with. Ain't no kids taking Percocets when I was 17 years old. No kids was drunk off cough syrup when I was 18 years old. We was listening to Rock Kim, we wasn't listening to Meek Mill. That's right. I was listening to KRS One. I wasn't listening to Yo Gotti. I wasn't listening to that. You know how to deal with that. I don't know what to do. So I'm pleading with you today. Take power and take control over this city. And anything you need from me, I will be there with every resource that I have at my disposal. God bless you. Keep pushing and keep fighting. Go ahead.